C is discussion of on payment options for street improvement projects. And as you remember, that was the main focus point on a lot of people's minds is streets. So it'd be now the discussion on where's the money going to come from. And I think Adam has the options that are available. Sure. Um, one of the things that we're ready to move forward with is an RFP, a request for proposal to hire an engineering service. Um, to begin the process of putting together a formal plan. Um, to do so, one of the directions we need to provide within that RFP that we draft will be our plan. That does not mean it cannot change, but what our plan or our intent is as far as paying for the cost associated with the project. In most cases, we will be lucky if we can get 10% matching grant. I would say that and talking with Lake City, I know one of the things I ran into with them is they're not receiving any grants on their project. There's not much of anything out there for it. So assume that we're going to be dealing with most of the cost associated with this project. Um, there's basically two options that we have to pay for this project. Uh, one is general obligation bonds, uh, which is a direct uh, debt service property tax. Uh, the other one is special assessment, uh, which has been our practice in the past. The way the special assessment program works is there's usually a limit on the amount that you can charge on a particular area. Um, on some blocks, you will not be able to assess enough to pay for the cost on that associated block. It falls upon the city to be responsible to cover those overages. Uh, and in that case, we would have to set up a, a minor obligation bond uh, to deal with those overage costs. So you really, your options are either we pay for the entire project through some kind of a general obligation uh, method, or we pay through it through a special assessment program knowing that there'll be a small general obligation associated with that project, which is the practice we have uh, used for some time now. But I know there's been some questions in the past about what our, which method we would like to use, and I would just like some direction from the council to draft that RFP. Can I throw out a question first, sure. though? Are we getting the cart before the horse? Uh, should we not have some kind of a plan and know what costs we are talking about before we decide how we're on pay for them? Well, that, one of the estimates that, one of the reasons we hire the engineers is to do a full-fledged estimate for us. But do we have to tell him how we're going to pay for it before he does it? To, to, to get a accurate report, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you have a confirmation after? Yes, you can. Uh, more than one, two, 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 yes, you, I mean, you could have a different mix than just uh, paying for the overage. I mean, you could have a blend where 50% is paid for through general obligation and 50% would be paid for through special assessments. You can't have those type of monster programs. Uh, uh, they, the second thing is, you said you were talking to, uh, what did they do now? Was that geo Yes, they were paying through their program through a general obligation bond. Um, Kim, the city administrator, said that it, roughly once every three years they were going out and doing this bond uh, to cover somewhere between three hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars worth of work, and they would basically just do whatever was on their list over that period of time based upon that amount of cost. And the thing you have to watch out for on, on geo bonds is getting up against your, your bonding limit. Right. So if all of a sudden you have an emergency and you need to spend a bunch of money on something, the money's not there. And that's the reason I feel special assessment is the best way to go. It's paid to go. Um, get the scope of the project, you know, when your streets are going to be done. I mean, your special assessed over 10 years. And it's paid for. I mean, that's the way we've always done it. And I, and I would hate to change that because we have done so many projects in the last 10 or 15 years where people were special assessed. And now, if we change it, it looks like we're not treating everybody fairly. What? Okay, we did Heron Street, we did North Fifth Street, we did South um, 16th Street. Those were all special stuff. Um, well, a couple things I guess I disagree with you on is uh, uh, I think we did just because a we've done it that way in the past. There's always been a lot of contention with that. Um, doesn't mean to me that that's what we have to look at. Tell the people that have paid it. That's I agree. Just like you have kids in school, you know, if you don't own Nobody property, 
and say somebody owns farm ground or a house, they're paying for the kids in school. So, but my question for you, Adam, then is, uh, do you have a rough estimate of what it costs to replace the city block? It's pretty expensive, actually. If you're just doing an overlay, it's not overly expensive. You can do an overlay for um, for forty to sixty thousand dollars. But when you're dealing with going back to the uh, um, uh, to the start and uh, boring it all out, replacing the road from the start, then you get quite expensive. In that type of case, you could be talking about one hundred and ten to one hundred and forty thousand dollars. It gets quite expensive in that process. <coughs> well. See, that's another thing I was thinking of, is with the GO bond now, um, what, uh, you know, say we're looking at $800,000, and it depends on the street, of course. You know, you could be looking at seven blocks, and that GO bond would be paid off on one It would be up to the council, we could do it uh, 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, but there, you said they're doing it down there at three. No, 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 no. no. They're sitting on a new bond. A new bond every three, three years. Every three years. Yes. So they're adding that to that. Yes. Yeah. And that was one of the things I know she was, she stressed she was concerned about is is they have rolled. I think their debt service portion of their tax rate, which is about twenty one, twenty two dollars right now, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to nine dollars of that is their debt service rate. Right now. Whereas right now we're sitting at about a dollar with our debt service. And their bonding capacity is about to uh, Well, that's the other element you have to take into consideration is the limitation of bonding. What's our bonding capacity? Uh, it's a percentage of our overall assessed value. I'd have to grab that for you. Got about $3 million left right? well, Yeah, I mean, it, we're actually in pretty good shape as far as, far as our debt, uh, our debt ceiling goes. And, uh, of course, that will all change here in about three weeks when the new assessments come out for the valuation. Of well, I think mean, the first thing you need to do is to get a hold of Bob and maybe a couple of city council people and put a priority on five or six. We got that G and O study, even though I don't think it's the best, but we use that as a basis. And if, so if people look at it and, okay, get a priority of the five streets you want to do, and then we can look at Right now, the, based on that GAO report, built into last year's CIP budget, and it's roughly, at the time we set it about two years out in advance, there were about seven areas that were included in that plan, and that came up to roughly, and of course this number, financial number is old now, but we were looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of $700,000 at that time. Very Correct. Those estimates are. That's why you want to go out and do the proposal but and actually get, get your. We need to get a priority on what street streets. Bob and Blue Rail. Hoover, who's on the on the street committee that prioritize. If you're saying 100,000 a, a block, if we want to do a million dollars, okay, let's look out where what's the best 10 blocks to do. Yeah, look at the, at the ownership of it and then figure out. You need to tell me what if we were to raise. Uh, a dollar, a thousand dollar taxes, what that's going to bring for the, into the for revenue yeah. and do the amortization. And um, I think too it makes a difference to me on assessments. I think if there's no workman done, it's the gravel road, I think it should be assessed. But if it's a maintenance issue of the overlay, I guess I got a little, I think this whole city should be paying for part of that because the whole city uses it. I agree. But the, is another issue we have is some of these overlays that have been done, you know, the concrete underneath, I know it's just crumbling, you know, because it's 89 years old and you can't overlay that again. So that's why we need some of that bob to go, hey, you know, what are we going to do here? Okay, what, what's going to be your first step then? I would say the first step, based on what I'm hearing, is is I'll call together before the finance committee meets. I'd call together with the street committee, and we would review the JEO recommendations to make sure that they understand what. If and with Bob to make sure that that is still the plan we want to move forward with, and whether or not we want to make adaptations to that before we would present it to the finance committee for uh, to improve into the budget. Yeah, I think we'd work with Bob and give us 10, 12 blocks. And it could be first priority, second priority. I mean, first priority, ten blocks, second priority, five blocks, whatever it is. 
council in agreement. Okay. And you will also give us some facts in on, you know, okay, hey, what's it going to cost us to... Yeah, I can give estimates. That's, right. That's what I no. need. No. Rough yeah. estimates. Yeah. Okay, you know, to do a million dollars. You know, what's that going to do to our taxes and that kind of The special assistant does something. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Yeah, I, I'm going to make one comment and, and perhaps put it, put it in the form of a question. If we do special assessments, you know, properties that aren't worth very much as far as, let's say, housing is concerned, uh, most assessed value, are those people that own those places, you know, and I'm looking at ability to pay, will they be hit harder as a special assessment, put them in a more difficult position for coming up to money? you know, to pay that, um, you know, I, I understand that the city would pick up the overage, but I hope it's not a, you know, a regressive tax where lower income people are hit harder than... Uh, it, it's more based bill upon the assessed value of the, uh, the property than it is on the... Uh, uh, the <coughs> the little by the footage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's 25%. Uh, you can't go any more than 25% of the assessed value of right. the property. Right. So then the city would have to automatically yeah. pick that up. Oh, but right. for somebody living on a fixed income, you know, that's going to be... Well, they don't even have to have a fixed income. Some people living on two incomes have trouble, too. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm not saying one way or the other which way you want to go with it. I'm just saying it's not just people well, with fixed income. But I think it's different options to look at them and right. some agree. I've got one comment that I'd like to throw out. I think you, I, you, you constantly in here have to think long and hard. You're establishing a precedence here with this decision that, you, that you're going to make that's going to carry on in this community possibly for the next 20, 30 years. I agree. So I think it's very important when you look at this is if you want to change what's happened in the past because you're going to affect Sac City for the next 30 years. You know, we look at my case with the building next door. We fought that now going on two years and we still have no money. We come up with $10,000. Now we're talking millions of dollars. Okay, point well taken. Let's move on to, unless there's more comments. 